and welcome back to the Not So Fit Couple podcast with your hosts, Lucy Davis. And Benjamin Holden. Dun, 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 I think that should be our theme tune every That's week. The theme tune. Yep. This week's episode is again sponsored by Fabletics Mayor. Da, da, da. He's fab. He's athletic. He's Fabletic. Is that the slogan? No, it's not. It's made that I think that you should put that forward, yeah. though. With, I think that, that's in that a... voice, <laughs> In that voice and tone. Today's episode is sponsored by Fab Black Men. The clothing sponsor I've been with for many, many years now. Love them. Enjoy them. Feel, feel great on the crotch. I'll be telling you more about some of the offers during the podcast. Amazing. But we're going to start this week's episode with a joke. That was a joke. Oh, a joke. Oh, Cal, we have a new word. A joke. That you, one's you Lucy Davis. Okay. Yes. Oh. Uh, ready, ready this one. <laughs> yeah. This isn't. I'm not going to play. Is it rude? So. Mm. It's always rude. Ready? Okay. Ooh. Okay. We need to make sure Lucy Davis is on her form here. <sighs> okay. Straight face. Okay. Yeah, I'm straight faced. Try and understand the joke. Like, let's okay. start lubricating your brain now because it'll take you a while sometimes for it to sink in. To uh, to understand. get through the pipeline. Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. This is quite relevant to what we were doing at the weekend. <laughs> What's the best? Stop. Study yourself. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. What's the best part about gardening? You get rid of all your weeds. Getting down and dirty with your hose. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Also, that was actually really great. That was that was really great. Getting down and dirty with, with your hose. It was the weekend doing some gardening, weren't we? Yeah, we had. A, <laughs> that's really funny. We had a great time gardening. I feel like it's very therapeutic. Do you know what I feel? We're not pros, but it's. I feel you do. You do three hours work, yeah, gardening, and it looks like you've done fuck all. <laughs> we finished weeding I, and we were like, we, oh. Me and you the other day, fit as a fiddle, by the way, we were crawling back into the house, yeah. feeling sorry for ourselves. I look back at the, I look behind me to go, oh yeah, I've done a good job there. Yeah. Nothing. This, Looks like I've done yeah. nothing. Absolutely nothing. I do feel though, this is why my nan and gramps are so fit and well. Yeah. Because they have such a big garden. They've been gardening well, their whole lives. because your granddad gets down and dirty with the hose. Def, absolutely not. Don't, you cannot. Getting jiggy with it. Na, 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 na. Go <laughs> grand, na, 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 na. Oh, shut up. I'm just going to dilute that with this. Okay, some Coro. Can, do you reckon I can open this? Whoa. Shh. Is it going to fizz everywhere? No. This is... Oh, good. this is a Coro branding, by freaking... the way. It is amazing. So I had a friend's day the other day and she commented about how nice... Fucking hell, I can't get that open. No. I actually just use my jumper. This is where you now need to kind of prove <laughs> people wrong that women can lift. Sure. <laughs> no, seriously, that's like one of those things things like you open the biscuits and i'll get this open i can't do it ben you have to open it i hate that that's what i really loosen that for you see <laughs> look how you i pop that open you're not putting it in a glass no you're swigging it straight from the bottle mm. so this is actually a kombucha and i've had kombucha probably for the last five years i'd say but that this one's, one's really one. delicious that's like, not a non-fizzy one but it's not doesn't blow your lid off well, it's like beer. you know after like you've had a line of coke and sometimes you get that no, no can not relate to it's, that. Um, it just feels a bit fizzy on your nose sometimes. I'm going to have a whole glass of this. Actually, you don't need that much with kombucha, but kombucha does have health benefits, what I feel. What are we doing? Some wine tasting? Can I have a glass of kombucha or what? No, no. But that's actually quite a lot because the wine, the, these glasses are quite large. Yeah. If you're on YouTube, look how much I've got in my glass. If anyone ever served you that in a bar, what would you say? Excuse me? Yeah, <laughs> if you're not. too right, you would. <laughs> glass half empty yeah. quarter empty no but kombucha does have a lot of health benefits as well i've always taken it since i had a really really bad stomach about four years ago now and i just like it i think it's, it's really it's good for your that, gut health it's something i've been drinking since i've had my issues with ibs and it seems to be okay with it i mean it does say on fodmap that you're not supposed to have, to have it but i've not really? been following fodmap at the moment yeah um I'm just gonna put the, the other thing i'm also trialing some probiotics at the moment i'm not even going to tell you what they are until i've Played around a little bit more, and then we have these, which is actually not a biscuit. So if give you give Carl one as well. if you looked at last week's episode, I have little tins after watching the home edit. It's all labelled. I've labelled it biscuits. However, I feel like it's more wafer. There's a wafer. These are the caramel Carl, wafers. Do you want a wafer? Coral. No, they're ginger. Oh, just don't eat it down the mic, probably. I think <laughs> nobody eat down the mic today. There you go, Ben. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Should we all try them at the same time? Yeah, off yeah. the mic though. Three, two, one. Great times. They're nice. They're pretty good. Wow. 
I mean, they're very, there's, it's very air, air, air. Very light. Very light. Very light. Guess what are the calories in that? One. What, one? <laughs> Less yeah, literally. They're, 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 they're kind of those good things you can leave on a coffee table and have a coffee with and not feel like, mm. wow, I've just inhaled the world. They're really good. I feel like they're a bit bougie. You're the worst host in the world, but well, by the way. Why do I not get a Coro? Uh, oh. I didn't, I just didn't serve you one. I'll have a shot as well. <laughs> no, actually, it will last you a really long time. But we do have a, do we have a code or a link for Coro? Yes, we do. It's not so fit five. Not so fit five for discount. Yes, and if we'll... you want more, I'll give you more. <laughs> see that? No, see, I mean, I just don't want to waste it and then you don't drink at all. But yeah, we've been working with Cora for a while now and they're really, really, yeah, really them. fantastic. And we've had a lot of feedback from you guys as well, actually, who have been loving the product. So yeah, happy oh, King, days. King of Natural Goods. We'll leave the link in the description. You can check that out. 100%. I think they've got an Instagram page as well. It's like Coro UK. K-O-R-O. Yeah. Coro. So let's get down and day. With the hose. With How do you spell hose? Is in is it H O H O E S? No. Yeah, it is H O S E. For a hose in the garden. Oh no, that's okay. Yeah, that's yeah, what the joke was. I'm talking like P I M P. No, oh, carry on. So today we're going to be talking about body image and body insecurities because I feel, especially when we get into summer months, it, people start to focus on weight loss a lot more, and people's sort of perception themselves can change based on how frequently they're looking at the body and their weight yeah I've, i also feel social media in general talks about it more again as the point you made it's summer people wearing less but there is a massive increase of people talking about dealing with bad body image days and things like that and negative self-talk around body image around summer for sure i'm actually super excited about this episode to be honest me too. I have so many show notes. I mean, I feel like a lot of people that start the gym start going the gym because of bad body image or low self-confidence or they're trying to fix or trying to solve a problem that they've got with their body image. Mm. This was certainly the case for me. When I think I told this story before, when I first started training, it was because, when was it? it must have been about 15, 16. Yeah. Feel all that. You looked a lot different. I didn't know you, but I've seen the picture. You really wouldn't even. Well, I played a lot of football. Mm. You're a bit, you're a bit lanky. Oh, wasn't, well, wasn't lanky. I'm trying to compare to people with what you were now. Yeah, I was, maybe we can put I was, a picture. I was probably nine stone, wet through. I was skinny, and it was around the time Ronaldo was in his peak, and those Nike Pro tops came out, and I always wanted one. It was like the dream. I was like, I'm gonna get one of those and look as sexy as Ronaldo, and I got one. I didn't look as sexy as Ronaldo. Sure I did. put it on, came down to the front room. And this is no disrespect or offense to my mum. I walked in, I was like, yeah, I'm the fucking man in my night pro. I look like Ronaldo. And then they, they, she just laughed. And I, could, I think there was someone else in the room who laughed as well. And they're like, you look like a bag of bones. And I was like, Ksh. dagger to the heart. Dagger to the heart. And I took the top off. I never wore it again. That was the only time I wore the top. Do you still have it? No, binder, oh. bin the top. My dad bought me. It was twenty quid, I think, or twenty five quid. And ever since then, that was when I started going to the gym. It was to fix my own body image and self esteem. And I feel like that happens for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I was discussing this this morning with Cal in the gym. Of, I understand why that this happens, and I understand why people diet and train to try and solve that pain or, or solve that problem. But does that? essence in itself or that methodology in itself of dieting and training to improve self-confidence just leave you fair away from that because if you then pin your happiness or your self-confidence on a destination which we know sometimes is impossible to get to mm. are you just forever chasing this self-confidence and self-esteem that you pinned on somewhere else that you're never going to achieve because you can never fully be satisfied yeah i think as humans we're also always looking for the next thing and when you said this morning, right about your personal experience about why you got into the gym. Again, we've told this on the podcast before, but I think it is relevant I to. Do you really? really? Mm. Oh gosh, I feel like I've told you quite a lot. Well, my experience, and I think the issue is as well, many of us internalize messages starting at a really young age that can lead to either positive or negative body image and how you perceive yourself. So I, from the age of 12 to 17, I didn't really care 
what I looked like. As I was an athlete, I was a lot more focused on performance, strength, being a swimmer. I just wasn't really aware of anything to do with my body, even though I was in a costume 24 seven. But when I stopped swimming when I was 18, that's when I started to become really aware of what I looked like and that I was actually underweight. Mm -hmm. So we used to get our body fats measured pretty much every three weeks or every two weeks. It was ridiculous. The amount of times it was ridiculous. We were weighed every single day. And it was before British Champs. We all got into this room to have our skin folds done. And we had to do it in front of people, which again was a bit intrusive of your personal space. We had our skin folds done and our numbers were shouted out. And the girls' skin folds were supposed to be supposed to be the same as their body weight. And the boys were supposed to be like half. However, my skin folds, my body fat was half my weight. As in, I was basically where the guys were at. Mm. And one of the girls shouted out in front of everyone, oh my gosh, she's so anorexic. One, yeah. yeah. Bear in mind, one of these girls was really, one of my really close friends. Really hope she's listening to one of the podcasts because she'll fucking know it's about her. Because of that- That's a fuck you moment. It is, yeah, because that for me, I I started going to the gym twice a day, all the time when I quit swimming because I was so self-conscious about my weight. But I didn't go to build, well, I wanted to build my glutes, mm. but I wanted to lose thigh fat. I wanted to be even skinnier. I wanted to look ridiculously athletic. Who was the pinup of, of your time for that? You know, like, for example, mine was kind of Ronaldo and that's where it started and then when I got going, I just wanted to build more and more muscle and became more and more extreme. Which did you have like a pinup or an idealism back then? No, I used to look at not people in the fitness industry. I used to look at models, so size zero models, magazines, and stuff magazines, like that. Uh, Victoria's Secret catwalk. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's changed a lot, isn't it? That changed significantly, yeah, and for the better, really, because I used to look up to those people being like, oh my God, I want thighs like them. Like, their legs are literally so long the size of my body. Stuff that I could never actually change. But I didn't look up to people at the time in the fitness industry, but as my body started to develop to be even more muscular and stronger and bigger, that's when I started to idolize people like Hattie Boydle. Mm -hmm. Looks incredible. She's very muscular, very athletic. So I had that massive switch from wanting to be a size zero person to actually want to be more muscular but it is really hard isn't it when you actually look back on it and if you have a negative experience from quite a young age with body image or self-esteem it can stick with you for years and years and years yeah i was so i was young and it, it all happened and it never it kind of never left and that's why i mean it's kind of thank i'm thankful now because look but even now serious question mm. do you feel fully confident in your own body nope but again, people wouldn't think that. Who just yeah. who just look at you? They'll think Lucy Davis, the most confident person in the world, abs, lean, muscular, nice glutes. Like people just think you're uber confident and you've got self confidence. And again, it doesn't matter what stage in your fitness journey you're up to. And this is what I'm talking about before when I was talking about where that self confidence lies and reaching, a, thinking that you're going to get to a certain destination and automatically you're going to be happy and super self confident. It doesn't work that way. You'll see a lot of the most muscular, leanest, shredded people in the world mm. who don't have the best self confidence. And that's why I'm saying it's not always a good thing to pin your confidence on that destination. Really good quote that I took from. I've listened to the Nick Bear podcast and I think he had a guest on he was talking about this destination and process and he was talking about how the guy who enjoys walking will walk way further than the person who enjoys reaching the destination. I don't get it. Say it again, sorry. The guy who enjoys walking mm -hmm. will walk way further than the guy that enjoys reaching the destination. Yes, the guy who is reaching the destination will just kind of be always pining for that one thing and not really enjoying the process. Whereas the guy who walks is just walk, 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 enjoying and walk, it, and walk and walk, loving it. Yeah. Same with like you, that's why I mean with, with fitness, you've got to fall in love with a process that works for you, and that makes you confident in yourself. And having those small wins along the way that you can think, yeah, fucking got that hip thrust today. Yeah, got that deadlift mm. today. Yeah, got that pull up today. Yeah, I lost a pound this week. Not my goal is 14 pounds celebrate each one of those little wins and make them all feel worthy because then that's when you'll truly enjoy the process instead of just looking for that big super bowl win that for a lot of people never comes i think one of the things with body image as well is it's what you believe about your own appearance a lot of the time people get feelings of anxiousness or worry because they think 
other people have an opinion about their body and they don't. A lot of like when people say you're having a bad body image day, it's all your self-perceived perception of your your own body yourself, mm -hmm. how you feel when you're moving around, uh, memories, assumptions, generalizations, but it's your own mind that thinks that. It's nothing else. Nothing else is triggered. It's your own mind. It's like, oh, bad body image day. But that's where sometimes, I spoke about this on another podcast, how we often say, you shouldn't give give a shit about what other people think. And we all do give a shit about what other people think. But sometimes that's valid if it's coming from, I suppose, quote unquote, the right person. Mm. Because you can say, oh, I look like shit, I look like shit, whatever. And I can be like, Lucy, you look unbelievable. And that sometimes you need that external validation because people with body dysmorphia sometimes are not truly seeing what is actually there. It's sometimes where we need to think, well, if I've got 10 people telling me that I look amazing and I'm the person who's saying I look like a piece of shit, surely I need to kind of reconsider what my own thoughts on my own body is. Yeah, I think one of those as well, which is like a really important point to note because there will categorically be people who listen to this being like, they definitely don't have bad body image days. Like Fuck me. they don't have bad body image days. I was looking at myself this morning, like you are a fat piece of shit. Well, that's a bad body image day. Yeah, I was like three seconds and I was sound. But my point is anyone no matter what category you want to put yourself in athlete non-athlete gym goer runner swimmer whatever you are you can categorically it's okay if you have bad body image days i think it's really hard for people because i've had messages off girls who are muscular and they look awesome and they mess me being like how the hell do you deal with like a bad body image day when you feel like you're not supposed to as like everyone in their own right can have a can have bad feelings about their body i feel as though it's a normal process that does happen and i just really want to make that point because it's not fair to just pinpoint people and say well you can't feel like that because you yeah, look yeah. like that it's the same with mental health no no, no you, you don't have anxiety because you have all this same you with that, the mental health one that, com that comes a lot with football players saying oh you don't deserve to have a moan or you don't deserve to have an off day because you get paid 250 grand a week doesn't matter how much financially income you have you can still have mental health problems mm. and I feel like when the more people sometimes fall into the rabbit holes and the depths of fitness, and this is why it pisses me off a lot of the bullshit that's out there and why we tend to call a lot of it out, is that people can often become more self-conscious as they become more self-aware with their bodies as they get into fitness mm -hmm. and look at things that they never saw before. Or often people highlight or people like to highlight on social media things that to let's normalize this. And I don't think sometimes it normalizes it. It just highlights it to other people who never had an issue previously with it but now have an issue with it because some people hi highlighted it because we need to normalize it. We need to fucking normalize everything. That's what, that's the thing that pisses me off sometimes is normalizing fucking everything. It was normal until you fucking brought it up. I think that's the, one of the most significant ones is the cellulite thing. Yeah. I have always had cellulite and then people started posting about it on social media being like, like squeezing their leg, being like, look, cellulite, no cellulite. I'm like, well... I've always had it and I've I've never been asked. Yeah. I could literally not give a fuck because 98% of women have it. But then people were posting about it, which I think personally would make more people self-aware that they have it. Whereas beforehand, they might actually not have really cared. Yeah. So like for women is just how your fat sits under your skin. It is really that simple. The structure of it is different to how guys sits under their skin, which is why you don't really see that many men with as much cellulite as women it, it's your structure of your body so it's it's an it's like having an elbow it's literally like having an elbow or a knee is yeah. what is is what it is and then people yeah i get quite frustrated by that topic actually because i do think it made people more self-conscious because then they realized why is this being pointed out yeah 100 percent. so i was trying to i thought about is that called the snow white effect but i don't think it is i was trying to google it but i have no idea i was no. looking i was looking at some stats as we were going into this podcast just mm -hmm. to see like for the general public what the level of, of body this fat this satisfaction. satisfaction is and a lot of people sorry is this guys and girls yeah i'm everyone? gonna go into it. higher body dissat dissatisfaction is associated with poorer quality of life psychological distress Mm -hmm. And the risk of unhealthy eating behaviors and eating the whole disorders mm -hmm. massively increases, which we've both been there. So uh -huh. we can 100% on board with that. Research also suggests that body image can be influenced by 
relationships with friends and family. It can be influenced by um, how other people speak about their bodies. So if you're in a friendship group where people are super negative about their bodies, that they, they or have or have little self confidence, it it can sometimes have a knock on effect to the way that you portray yourself. Mm-hmm. Exposure to images of idolized or unrealistic bodies through social media and the pressure to look a certain way or to match an ideal body type. Yeah. I got the exact same stat in terms of the thing where you start, well, people who have quite negative self-confidence or body image, they become quite obsessed with weight loss as well, which probably stems into what you said about the eating disorders, where they become so fixated on what, I mean, I did it. That's that's exactly what I did. I was so fixated on it. I was bulimic for three and a half years. I think, so for me, and this is where my eating disorder stemmed from, I got into this period of, of massive comparison and thinking that oh, to, to onboard clients and to be a better health and fitness professional, I need to be in better shape because mm. that's what, for a long time, the fitness industry was geared towards. And I was just saving on Instagram and my save tab pictures of guys who were just shred as fuck. If my dad would have gone onto my Instagram saved images, it would be like, son of you guy, because it's just full of men with the mm. tops off. And if you're one of those people who's the same, who's just saving images of, and idolizing unrealistic body types, it's eventually going to have an, an effect because if that's all you see, you get an unrealistic representation of what the world is really like. Do you know what I did? You just jogged my memory. I uh, my sc- my phone screensaver was a Victoria's Secret model. Mm-hmm. I think a tons of people. Me and my that, best by friend did it. Yeah, and that's I'm why Meg. I don't Meg think it's it. always a good thing. As long as you can separate expectations because there's a difference between comparison and motivation you can use something as a, as a motive and something that you idolize and look up to but don't compare to them because that's straight away where you turn a different chapter and it becomes very negative yeah well i guess we've had it to some extent before where i've had girls say i want to look exactly like you yeah. what do you do i'm like well i'm really sorry but you don't you don't have that goal mm-hmm I am a genetic person also. Genetics play a huge part. And I'm all, I've am i been athletic since I was born. So please don't compare to me because that's a really actually a negative thing to do for your own self-confidence yeah. because you're never ever going to look exactly like someone else. You might look similar, you know, body shape and things like that. Never and, gonna but you're never going to look the same as someone else. It just doesn't work like that. And also that's coming from me and Ben talking to you now, people who are listening. Don't compare to people like me and Ben. We don't compare to other well, people in me, the industry. Me and Carl were having this discussion this morning in the gym about how... You two had a great chat in the we gym. We had a little, little chat on the podcast pre, session. Pre, um, pre-going live and we were talking about, Carl was saying, we've been training for like, what, two years or whatever, but my biceps will never be the same size as yours. And that I comes like down... The size of well, actually, we're talking, about, we're talking about Psalms. Do you know what Psalms are? Psalms. A drug. It's not actually a drug. It's um, it's used by a lot of bodybuilders. I have to get the exact terminology of it up. Is it's it's an acronym, isn't it? Is that an acronym? Selective or an androgen receptor modulator. So it, I think it actually changes, and what I believe it does, it helps to push your genetic potential of how much you can grow. So everyone can grow to a certain limit based on genetics. So it is a drug. It's, it's not classed as a drug, I don't think. How? But if it's enhancing your genetic ability, how is that not? That's surely illegal. Because anything that enhances your genetic ability is taking something like a steroid, surely. Uh, so all psalms are investigational drugs. Investigational drugs. It basically does mean they're a drug. Uh, I don't know if it's actually a drug. Uh, anyway, that's beside the point. Okay. Um, They help alter your genetics. And we were talking about this because everyone can have different genetics. And everyone can... So someone could follow my exact program. They're not going to look the same as me. Mm. I've, got, uh, I've got pigeon chest. So I'm never going to have massive tits it's do you just... want to explain to people what pigeon chest is just in case so my know. rib cage it comes out quite far mm-hmm. it's just genetically the way i'm made up and it means that i won't grow a lot of tissue on my chest and then you'll see some people with absolute house chests who will do a couple of sessions per week or a couple of sessions no, sorry who's done a couple of sessions in a life with a bigger yeah. chest than me it's yeah. one of those things and i think sometimes accepting that is better than you fighting an uphill battle it doesn't mean that you can't still be motivated i won't go and bang chest it's just a case of something that I'll accept. But Psalms change that genetic potential. But that's the conversation that me and Carl were having this morning about how you can be following programs doing the same amount of volume 
but you're never going to look the same as someone else. Yeah, it's it's and so that's, true. That's the other thing that pisses me off about people who will use their body sometimes to sell programs. And it's fine to a certain extent to say like this is what I've done, but don't promise it to other people because you can't do that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Do you know what always used to really frustrate me? And I only kind of came to terms that it was 100% genetics about two years ago I don't store body fat on my upper body I just don't I never have since I was like two and I store it on my lower body and I get like an under glute like a double glute you know where like my fat under butt that's it my fat sits under my glutes on my thighs and I used to really despise it didn't I I remember you 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 used to wear shorts in the gym I didn't wear shorts in the gym oh my gosh yeah the whole first year we were dating I never wore shorts in the gym and then eventually I was like, do you know what? I absolutely, I really like my thighs and I like my glutes and that underbutt is never ever gonna go because I would have to drop my calories so freaking low as in impossible, couldn't probably live off them because that's my stubborn fat. That's where it stores and that's where it sits and that's great. Like now I've come to terms with it and as you said, when you do kind of accept it and it's like, okay, cool. You're then not gonna fight against it anymore. Well, that's where it becomes a part of sacrifice of like how far you want to get to and stuff. And that's what I'm talking about when people Id- idolize in certain bodies and people don't realize the sacrifice that comes with that. I did a video on, can you be fat but happy the other, the other week? And a lot of people who have abs year around, obviously you're an exception as athletes who are different exceptions, mm. are fucking miserable because they're just yeah. chasing that all the time. And that's where you've got to be aware of, okay, I've achieved this, but then to achieve that next level, I've got to sacrifice this. And it's something that I'm actually battling with at the moment as we've got a whole day in 13, 12 days. 11. And I noticed that as I tried to drop down leaner for whole day, it's just a challenge. I want to get down a little bit leaner, feel a bit more confident on whole day. And I haven't set that goal for a while because I've been very performance driven. I even noticed with myself, I'll do certain things. I, I'll pull my top up every now and again in the mirror to see if my abs looking better i will be a bit more restrictive with calories my thoughts will change around food a little bit and that's something that you've got to be aware of especially with someone who's had an eating disorder before is that you're always going to have those thoughts in the back of your mind when it comes to dieting and you want to get down to those lower body fat percentages and that's where you've got to be careful and i have to ask myself the question of do i really want to get to that position where i've got to sacrifice relationships with food and exercise to get to a certain goal also on that note by the way because I had, I had someone moan about it the other day. Some people will have to be at 1,200 calories to lose weight. Some people. Because mm. someone, I had sent an email about how you shouldn't be on like 900 calories to lose weight. And they said, well, I'm on blah, 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 blah. If you are fucking f- four foot nothing and weigh 50 kilograms, your output is going to be very minimal. So you're going to have to be on a lower amount of calories. Unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles. If you're big, larger, your energy output is going to be higher. So your intake is going to be higher even for you to lose weight. Unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Well, it's categorically down to your age, your height, yeah. your weight, and your activity level. It's fa- it's facts. If you're, if you're yeah. yeah, four foot eight and you're 50 kilograms, your calorie intake will be lower than myself, who is five foot five and probably around 64, 65 kilograms. Yeah it's just that's just what it is that's just what the formula is some of the stats i was pulling up from the mental health foundation was and this is quite sad to be honest um i think it was based on 4500 adult uk adults and 1118 teenagers Mm -hmm. and the results highlighted that one in five adults to 20 percent felt shame um just over one third 34 percent felt down or low and 19% felt disgusted because of their body image. And then amo- sad. Yeah, that among teenagers, sad. 37% felt thirty seven percent felt upset and 31% felt ashamed in relation to their body. And just let me finish this off. <laughs> just over one in five adults said images used in advertising had caused them to worry about their body image. Just over one in five adults and 40% of teenagers said images on social media caused them to worry about their body image. Yeah, there was just a point that I was going to add to that one you made there. There was a study done, I think we have the exact same study, but women reported that they tend to compare their own appearance negatively with their peer group and with celebrities, but not with family members. 
while browsing Facebook, the comparison group that had the strongest link to body image concerned, concerns was distant peers, celebrities, or acquaintances. Mm-hmm. So it's never as such family and close friends. It's more so celebrities, people online, people on social media, which is, I guess, something we do actually really significantly need to touch on because before online social media, you had media, you had magazines, TV, watching the Victoria's Secret show, yeah. but then now it's so accessible to young girls and boys who are, what, 12? This is why I say often be careful what you open yourselves up to yeah. based on how you currently feel. And that's why I say to people often and openly, unfollow me. If my content, if you consume my content and you leave feeling worse off based on the current state that you're in, doesn't mean that producing bad content. Everyone can perceive stuff differently based on how your emotions or your experiences are at that time. Unfollow me because it's not good for you to, to follow me at that time. Well, I, I had to do it recently with someone who I'm actually friends with. I just had to, for a week, unfollow them because I couldn't consume the content. Yeah. And then I followed them again. It was fine. It's just you go through different phases and it's actually okay, as you just said there, to just for a period of time for your own sake. Unf- People don't get offended. You're not yeah. bothered. You do it for yourself. You're not doing it for them. Yeah, exactly. Just do it. And, and you sometimes wonder, especially with social media, why am I seeing all these bodies across brands and campaigns? What? So what I mean by that is, sorry, I should have kind of explained <laughs> that a bit more, is why do I see certain body types all the time across brands and campaigns? I think it's been very evident in, in the fitness industry how you just yeah. saw lean, shredded bodies all yeah. the time, which is why I'm really for the inclusivity of different body types across brands and mm-hmm. it's great seeing nike do it gymshock do it lulu i think i've done it quite a lot across loads of brands you still get this small minority of scum i'm gonna call them scum in the fitness industry who criticize people and like yeah. how is this motivating it's people who need to die off basically because this inclusivity makes people who aren't inside fitness way more relatable to makes them feel way more included within fitness because we do a very good job of excluding people a lot of time yeah i think if you're in fitness it's very often easy to put the blindfold or the blinkers on and just think about fitness 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 where we've got to think about all those people who need to feel more included so seeing other bodies makes it more relatable too and makes those people want to come to the gym because they feel more included by seeing bodies that are more like them yeah no i agree massively with that and i think one of the points that I just want to put across as well is, you know, when you talk about body image and body dissatisfaction, Mm -hmm. I think people automatically think it's just women. So it's it's predominantly women. It's predominantly women, which I mean, the stats stats do say 69% are influenced by ideal body shape that they see online Mm -hmm. and seeing pictures makes women want to lose weight. But then pressure from mass media. So not even just social media, so TV, magazine, everything to be muscular also appears to be related to body dissatisfaction amongst men. So it still happens to men. I think that's a really, really valid point. I don't know if it's spoken about enough that, I mean, I'm not a man, so I'm not talking from a male perspective, but the pressure to be muscular and to look a certain way as a guy when not everybody wants to do that. Yeah, well, it was funny you should say that because I watched this boxer commercial the other day, boxers in like briefs. I thought you meant like a punch No, and it was these... It was these two dudes, and I was like, who the fuck are these on this commercial? And the two dudes were peeled out of their, their brain, looked like two walnuts. They were fucking jacked out their brains. And I was thinking, what guy, dad, lad, whatever, is going to be looking at that going, yeah, I, I look like that? Tighty whities. What do you mean? I don't know what people call boxers. Tighty whitey. <laughs> Is it not? Well, part part of the reason I don't think people will buy into that kind of thing is like, I can't relate to that type of person. No. How many men actually look like that in the UK? Hot, not a, no. a tiny percent. Yeah. So we should be using more people who who are relatable to the general public. Mm-hmm. And it was a reason why I threw them in like pro top in the bin because I just I didn't feel good or how the advert yeah. portray, to, portrayed it to be. So we interrupt this episode to speak about the sponsor of this week's podcast, which is Fablex Men. I am wearing one of the Fabla X Men casual tees. I actually really enjoy these tees because they're minimal branded, they're super comfy, and I can wear it inside and outside the gym. Fabla X Men also have some introductory off- offers, which is with the VIP membership, whereas you will get 70% off all items of clothing when you take the VIP offer. 
or you can get two pairs of shorts for £24. So coming into summer, it's great to pick up some running gear, some cycling gear, or even some lifting and casual wear. I will leave all of the links in the podcast description and inside the YouTube video. Again, if you do go through on one of the links, if you can just also put my name, there'll be a little quiz in there as well. That'd be very much appreciated and enjoy the rest of this episode. But back to the social media comparison thing and how it pushes stuff out to us. One of the things I was really interested by was when I looked how the algorithms worked further and and how our perception of the world can be be skewed by Instagram, by Instagram intelligence. As in what it what it puts forward for you to see yes same as tiktok does so for example I'm trying to think of an example i can use say for example i double tapped an image of a bl- uh, a blonde female with what can i say what's something i like with a monster can yeah so blonde female, I've got months gone. Double tapped it. Next day, Instagram. Why the fuck you double tapping that? Oh, by I'm the trying way. to think of things. <laughs> Next day, there's a, a load of stuff on my feed of yeah. blonde females with monster cans, mm-hmm. but I just scroll past, scroll past them all. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then the next day, Instagram put in front of me just blonde females, just loads of blonde females. Because they they associated that it was not it wasn't the the monster that I liked it was the blonde female so they took they took the monster away and then they just showed me all the, these blonde females which is totally not realistic of the world I tell you I tell you gave a bit a better example of it actually there's a guy called Mo I think he's called the happy guy mm. and he was saying he I think this is a story he was he double tapped on a picture online of Uh, a woman playing a guitar solo. So the next day he saw loads of guitar solos and he skipped through them all because he didn't like any of the songs. So the next day, uh, there's loads of guys playing the guitar solos, didn't like any of them. So the next day, all Instagram showed him was females playing guitar solos because they associated him skipping the other other songs with that he doesn't like guys playing the guitar, it was just girls. So then that's where you're depicted with this image which isn't really reflective of the real world. And it can happen with fitness a lot of the time as well. And that's why Instagram intelligence is super, I think, fuckery. Well, it does it on the discovery page, doesn't it? Yeah. That's what the discovery page TikTok's is. TikTok's the worst for it, but yeah. So a really good example is I have the Archester homepage and because I only like home content on that account, all that comes up on my discovery feed is homes, sofas, chairs. And then on Lucy Davis Fit, I basically just like other fitness content mainly. And that is just all my discovery is filled with, which is clever to an extent because it's showing you what you want to see. Yeah. But the more time you're spending on social media, the more screen time you have you're just going to see that fitness content that you might not actually be wanting to absorb. Yeah, but it's the same with like mums and stuff as well because what, for your mum, my mum, even 10 years ago mums, mm. the only person that you compare yourself to is the mum down the ass or the mum in the playground. Now you're comparing yourself to the hyper hyper elite of every single female across the globe, mm-hmm. which is a, high, it's a lot higher standard to hold yourself to. So there's no wonder that people, body image and insecurities are way higher than what they used to be. Because seeing a totally different span of people. Well, yeah, you can see absolutely everybody. One of the things that I picked up on in terms of, I guess, like what can be done if you are really, like not just having one bad body image day, but having more repeated bad body image days and how you feel about yourself is actually just limit your screen time. So your overall screen time and specifically on social media So researchers studying body concern issues have found that the more we spend in the media world, the more exposed to the, in quotes, perfect body images, and the more vulnerable we are to compare our appearance to unrealistic bodies. So kind of protect yourself by not going on it as much. Mm -hmm. Very simply, don't go on social media as much. If (laughs) If you're in an uncomfortable place and you can't absorb the content all the time, Either unfollow those people, which is absolutely fine to do, or spend less screen time. It's hard sometimes, isn't it? Because I feel like when I'm in those places where I'm kind of in myself and don't feel confident and a bit shit in myself those days, I end up on social media more. 
mm, and yeah. end up scrolling more, which is just kind of double ended. Yeah, you feel like you have nothing to do. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to do any other shit, so you just end up on your phone. But I think it is an important thing to actually. Oh start yeah, hundred percent to, to be more self aware of. Yeah, be more self aware, and obviously on your iPhone as well, you can see how much screen time you've been on different apps, mm -hmm. and it tells you at the end of the week if your screen time is up or down. So just be more aware of things like that. Like they're putting it in front of you, like this is the percentage of time, or this is how many hours you spent on social media. You can look at it and be like, oh, like that is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. The the other thing that I found interesting was that, and again, this was on the the breaking binge eating dot com was that adults who use anabolic steroids for body image purposes are over uh, three to four times more likely to experience depression and anxiety than those who don't use steroids around body image. Say that again. Adults who use anabolic steroids for, for body image purposes are three to four times more likely to experience depression and anxiety. Is that because of the side effects of the steroids though? Probably a mixture of obviously tightened moods and different stuff. But mm. I think when you people, and as a somebody who's used steroids before, I think it makes you just uber heightened and focused on body image because the, the changes that you're used to seeing using the gym happen like five times faster. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing things I'm like, I mean, when I first took gear when I was 17, 18, and I was looking at myself like, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking massive. Like things were changing way quicker than they ever had before. I've seen all these changes. I'm getting more obsessed with what I look like. I was taking more photos. I loved the changes that I was seeing, but that couldn't last forever because I couldn't stay on steroids for my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I was also battering steroids because I was really badly advised. And that's why I want to mention this is because if people are thinking about oh steroids could be the answer to me, my self confidence, which I think a lot of people guys definitely do do. Yeah, I thought, I'd especially for me, guys. when I was when I was younger, I was super self conscious about my chest because it wouldn't grow. So I was like, I'll take steroids and I'll help my chest grow. I'll have more confidence. No, mm. does it fuck Ben? That was naive Ben who had low self confidence who wasn't thinking properly and I was misadvised at the time. I I used to go to chop. I remember sitting and doing the bench press one day, and some guy said to me, "Why have you got so many tops on?" I had three t shirts on. Was that just, to sweat more? No, I was just so nervous oh, about my, the way my chest looks. Chest. And so I, was, I got on a load of gear and it made me more self-conscious of myself because I just drilled into what I look like all the time and seeing these changes. It kind of heightens the the self-criticalness in you even further, even though you think that drug is going to help you to overcome that and you're going to be uber confident. And you, you do get more confident, I think, at the time. But then it all, it all comes crashing down like after you've come off stuff. Yeah, because you think you're reaching where you want to be, but actually yeah. that's not the way to do it. That's not an appropriate... That's not an appropriate way to do it because that's one thing that you said at the start of the podcast is that's just solely basing something I feel on a destination. You're just waiting to hit that ideal physique that you've got in your head but what is what, what is that ideal physique all that you've kind of given yourself always doing putting a plaster over a wound yeah that's always doing is putting a plaster over a wound because we're never addressing the fact of my own personal view on my body and make and making that relationship with my body better i wasn't doing that i was just going let me get fucking jacked and then i'll i'll be fucking i'll walk through walls yeah i think one of the so when I'm going to use myself as an example. If I'm having more of a bad body image day, it's because I've looked in the mirror and I've pinpointed something that I don't like about myself. So I've said something really negative about one part of my body. And when I was trying to look into this in terms of how do I articulate that to actually help people and not do that, one of the best things you can do is actually look at yourself as a whole person. And when you see yourself in a mirror or in your mind, choose not to focus on specific body parts and see yourself as you want to see you, yeah. which is a whole person. Don't look in the mirror because as humans, we always look in the mirror and pinpoint the negative. So yeah. I'd look in the mirror and be like, oh my God, like for whatever I'd point to this morning, it was this little mole thing that I've got on my nose, which is just ridiculous. Like that's the first thing I went to out of my whole body rather than appreciating everything that my body can do running, going to the gym, I was about to go to the gym, having a pre-workout, I pinpointed this one negative thing and it kind of set me up wrong for the whole morning. Yeah. Whereas when you appreciate your whole body, yourself as a whole person and what it can do, I think it really, really significantly does help your self-confidence and how you feel about yourself. I know it's really hard to do. 
I, it's, it's categorically not that easy. But I think if you can start practicing, appreciating yourself a little bit more, it just takes practice. It does. It's something you've got to work on. Yeah, you I, train and go to the gym to practice. Yeah, yeah. To go do train it your, your body image. I, I thought the exact same thing this morning when I said to myself, you're a fat piece of shit. I was like, no, Ben, tell yourself something that you like about yourself. Yeah. What did you tell yourself? Uh, I, had my, I had those tight pants on this morning. So I was like, <laughs> my fucking glutes look great there. Tight bum. Yeah. One one of the things that was interesting I started digging into is where does this why where, where does where do we this thing come from why we idolize skinny? Where does that narrative come from? And I wanna mm. Cal, ask me the question that you asked me this morning, Jim, because I can't remember exactly how you asked me and I thought it was really interesting. Well, I was wondering whether we think that supermodels are super skinny because society idolizes that type of body. Or whether we think society idolizes that type of body because supermodels are wearing those type of clothes. Is it which is causing which? So where's the cause and effect come from? So I, I started doing a bit of digging. I was like, where do, where does this real idol idolism stem from? Where, where where does it come from? Why do we why is skinny held as the narrative of this this is good, this is positive, this is sexy? And I was looking at some research which was going way, way back to how uh, I was looking at a model of how between obesity and future risk of mortality from all causes and relationship between obesity and obesity and the future of possibility of having children. So that's originally apparently where a lot of the why it was preferred to be slimmer was was due to, to health issues and the fact of being able to reproduce. Mm. And then there was a study done by um Aberdeen University who were looking at why thin women are deemed most attractive. And the results that they found was to, was to do with youthfulness. So slimmer people are deemed to be more youthful, which is something else that we we deem to be more attractive is is people who look youthful. So that was where one of the um the causes of why we kind of idol idolize thinness. But then I also started looking at this research from again breaking binge in, and it was really interesting to look at the way that children identify stuff as well. So, and how they favor certain characteristics and then mm. don't with others and have more unfavorable traits. So in, in another study of popular children cartoons, females were four times more likely than male characters to be depicted as underweight and overweight characters were more likely to be portrayed as unintelligent and unhappy compared to underweight characters. Really? So this is even stemming into cartoons and this is where i want to talk about and i'm really sorry because i fucking love disney love disney i'm a disney man we're going in a couple of weeks but they can be held as one of the culprits of it whether that's intentional or unintentional mm. just taking my foot space off no you look at your feet they're all up in my space up in my grill so <laughs> young girls are taught that the most valuable asset is their beauty from a lot of disney films yeah. If you look at the, the Disney prin beauty. princesses, Cinderella. what they look like, uh, this is known as feminine beauty, feminine beauty ideal, and it is pervasive throughout the princess movies. If you look at the princesses, they've got thin wrists, long thin necks, waists. tiny waists, big boobs, big eyes, yeah. and ninety four percent of fairy tale and princess movies mention physical appearance. Ninety four percent within each movie. This, wow. this discussion occurs on an average of 13.6 times with a range from 0 to 114 times for female physical appearance and a range of 0 to 35 times for male physical appearance. So physical appearance is mentioned way more times when it's a female princess or female character. Is this the older Disney movies though? Yeah. So so more specifically, that's what I wanted to talk about as well. Did you know they found that um, the Disney princesses when you look at them, or they did some of the examinations of the characters, their eyes were larger than their waists. Yeah, well, there's that stat with Barbies as well. If Barbies were real life people, they'd be like seven foot. It's not. There's it? an interesting stat. I can't remember specifically what it is with Barbies, but their waists are like two centimeters. They're, they're like seven feet tall. Then you've got children who see that all the time, and they're held up in these movies to be this beautiful princess. They get whatever they wish, and they're happy based on that that narrative and that agenda. So an interesting take on that. I grew up in that era 
So with Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, those sort of Disney films, they were what we grew up with. If kids growing up now, I think they have a much better chance with Disney movies. You've got... Well, this this is something I was going to say, but the reason why, before you say that, this this started coming up when Disney movies were created because it was when conventional gender roles were at an unnatural height in society and media around yeah. the period of like following World War Two, when domestic idealis- idealism was, was really high as well. So this is kind of the period that really captivated that movement and what things looked like because gender roles were way different back in yeah. World War Two and stuff like that. And it was really pushing that narrative down people's throats from those films, whether that was, again, intentional or intentional, I don't know. Yeah, so I feel like the 19, 1990s babies, so us, and then going previous. But then if you're a 2000 baby, so if you're born in the 2000s, you you might have grown up with more films like, I mean, obviously Encanto and Moana were quite new, but they really, really started to change Disney movies, the characters, the appearances. They didn't just, they, they weren't all the same and they weren't all these stick thin princesses who just idealize beauty. And it's a massive, massive step. So our kids, hopefully, will grow up with a much better understanding of different body types and different body shapes. Like Encanto, hats off to that movie. Because you've got Louisa, who's this strong, muscular woman. That's never been in a Disney movie, ever. I don't know. She, she the Louisa Mardi Gras. Yes, Mardi Gras. Had one of the highest grossing sales, I think, out of all Disney characters and they, mm. they sold out of all the stuff and people were hounding for Disney to get more of them in song. stock. And if you haven't seen the Encanto film, Louise is basically this real strong female who's got whose muscles and she's huge, dench, and she can pick up whatever pick shit. Up like donkeys and cars yeah. and stuff. And a lot of females started idolizing her because they'd not seen this kind of character in a Disney film before. And I think Disney were really surprised by the fact that so many people really took to this character. Yeah, I mean, I guess the one thing to point out is that, that came out in 2021. Like, why did it take like yeah, 30 I think it's, years? I think it's become a lot we more inclusive. And years. even the type of films that they're bringing out, like Coco, we watched the other day. Was so there was, I think, Onward. Yeah, I'm not onward. sure there's a, there a gay narrative in there. There's so, a lot more inclusivity to yeah. A lot of the films, which is really good to see as well. Yeah, because realistically, when you are talking about kids, it's what kids have access to. When you show them a movie, you want to be able to be like, well, even the kids in the movies and Disney movies are all white kids. Yeah, that's what we grew up with. Categorically, that's all we grew up with. That's all we knew. And times have changed, which is so positive. But obviously, we're talking about people who are now 25 to 30, 25 to 35, who didn't grow up with that. Who, I'm not saying you're scarred for life from watching a Disney movie. However, that is the media that we grew up with. And you never know. It might be one of the reasons why you do feel a certain way about your body. And as we said before, it's looking at yourself as a whole person, appreciating what your body can do, not just solely focusing on appearance. And I guess one of the nice things to do as well, so we have it with the happy list. If you're ever feeling like a certain way, we said before on the podcast, write yourself a happy list of things that you enjoy to do. You could do the exact same thing with your own self and your appearance or your personality. To, I don't know, top 10 things that you like about yourself. It's not an egotistical thing. It might just be something that you can read on your yep. notes on your phone. It could be like your hair, your bum, I don't know, your moles, whatever it is, you, and you like them. Yeah, do you know what I found? And this is really difficult to do, by the way, really difficult to do. Mm is because I still have insecurities now, mainly all my biggest insecurities were my chest, actually my calves, you know, because I've got really slim calves. It was like one of those things, those bro things that everyone took the piss out of. And one of the two big ways that I got over them was just, I don't know if it's got a terminology, but revealing them. So I did a video on Facebook like three years ago. I had the full video standing there with my top off. Felt super insecure, yeah, felt know. super conscious. But then I did it and I talked about my insecurity and the feedback I got on the video was fucking amazing. Yeah. And through just repetitive revealing of it and stopped hiding it, it made me feel more normal about it. I think because I was hiding it so much and so self-conscious about myself when people really weren't that arsed, it made me even more reserved about it. Same with my legs. I wouldn't, I'd wear pants all the time. I would wear high socks. Where now I just fucking wear ankle socks and shorts all the time. And the more that you become accustomed and, and treated as more normal, 
the more that you feel comfortable in your own skin. And that's a really hard thing to do is just reveal it and, and live with it. And at first, it'll feel really uncomfortable. But after a while, it starts to just feel the norm and it feels great. Yeah, well, it's like owning what you've got as well, isn't it? One of the things that I've definitely come across with being in the fitness space is the amount of people who said, are you getting a boob job? I nearly got a boob job when I quit swimming. Really? Yeah, you know that. I, I Me and my sister categorically wanted boob jobs because it was so... I mean, I, as soon as, I guess, my following started to grow, so many people, so many people were like, are you getting a boob job? Should you get a boob job? Like, are you insecure? If someone asks you, are you insecure about your boobs, which I was so much at the time, that's all I thought about. Now, I literally don't care. I talk about it quite openly. I personally don't like big boobs. No offense to anyone who does. I wouldn't suit them. Everyone's allowed it's not their my own body personal shape. Preference, yeah. Personal preference. If you want big boobs and want to get a boob job, absolutely fine. I just, I guess, became more comfortable with my physique and my shape, but... I really significantly went through a lot of other people commenting on my body, which is actually really, really difficult because when someone already tells you, so something you're insecure about and then someone says, oh, are you insecure about it? It's like, well, yeah, I am. And you just like highlighted that point to me. Yeah. But that's where, as you said, when you actually open up and talk about your insecurity, it makes you feel less insecure. I'm very open and honest about everything that I talk about now and it doesn't actually bother me yeah. anymore. But get into that stage, it can take time and it, it actually can be quite brutal. Yeah, I don't want to create double standards here. But I'm not saying you should just love your body and not want to be better. Because I think sometimes telling people you're enough is a surefire way to almost create more of a problem. Because if that person's mm. not happy and you say, oh, you're great and enough already, it can almost hinder what they want to do. I still think people should work on the things that they want to work on to be a better person or a better individual or seek happiness but just don't pin it as a destination yeah you need to be satisfied with what you are already and then just continue to work on it and this is one of the things for me because one i actually went one of the things i was really insecure about when i was at uni was because i've got big ears so i actually went and sat down when i got my first student loan i was going to spend all the money on getting my ears pinned back and in the end i was like no i'm not doing it Mm. prefer to get pissed and then Obviously, a few years ago, I got a hair transplant. So this is what I mean when if people have got real insecurities that they want to get done because it's going to help them move forward and be a happier person, I support that as well. Yeah, 100%. Because it made me way happier when I had my hair transplant. It was not, wasn't something that my hair was just going to grow back. It was a case of... <laughs> that was me yeah. but i was i felt i felt better about it once i got it done i felt happier about it i fucking love my hair now yeah i think that's it as well i think it's important not to say there's a right or wrong with that it, it actually doesn't matter what anyone else says about it it's complete personal preference because yeah. i remember saying to you at the time i was like you don't need a hair transplant. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't, I personally don't think you need a hair transplant. I'm not going to look look at you any differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, your hair, your hair line is awesome right now. But at the time I wasn't like, go like what, like all for it was. I, I was a bit like reserved, yeah. but it's something you wanted to do. And I was more than happy to support you with that yeah. because that's what you do. Because I knew it was, it was going to make you feel better. But I, I think even prior to going to get my hair done, no, I wasn't pinning that on my ultimate happiness. I no. just thought that's something that I want to get done mm. because working and being on camera all the time was something that I looked at a lot. And it wasn't even it wasn't even based on, again, what anyone else had said or, or seeking external validation because, as you said, you did, a lot of people didn't even know I had, had it done or didn't even think I needed it done. It was something that, for me well, personally, I wanted to, to have done. pull your hair forward a lot yeah, so yeah. people actually wouldn't know. It's only I would really know when you really pulled it back. Pulled yeah. it back. Again, though, just they were they're just some of the things that i was thinking about in terms of we're not saying don't work on you don't self-develop and that you shouldn't go out and get whatever you want to get done because it's each to their own but there that's what i had done and some of the reasons of why i got it done yeah you know, this is a really random point just to make you know with like clothing mm-hmm. and clothes i have swimmer shoulders i've got big shoulders i think my lats are bigger than my legs and i, ju- I ju- always will got a muscular upper body and I love it however I'm still not comfortable and won't be comfortable wearing a bandu bikini with like a no strap plus bikini because I don't personally think I'm com- I'm I'm not comfortable 
So why would I wear something that I'm not actually comfortable with? I choose to wear a different style bikini that makes me feel amazing in myself. And I think that's one of the things people like, you should be able to wear whatever you want. It's like, yeah, but also just wear what you're comfortable in. Yeah. Don't feel, because everyone's always like, no, 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 like you should like just do it, like get over it. I don't really want to because I don't actually feel comfortable doing it. So I'm just going to wear what suits my body yeah. and what I feel comfortable in. I sit on the fence with stuff like that sometimes because what's the reason that you don't feel comfortable? You're telling yourself that you don't look up. I think you look good in it. But you, You've never you, seen me in one. I have. I saw you put one on before and I think you look good in it, but you feel like you don't. And yeah. again, people have got to wear what they feel comfortable, feel comfortable in. in. And I, that's why sometimes I'd for years didn't wear a white t-shirt because my chest looked really bad in it. I'll, I'll, I'll wear them now. But for a long time, I didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. And I think it takes a long time sometimes to, to feel comfortable in something. And don't get me wrong, some clothes are made for short, tall people, bigger people, smaller people, whatever it may be. It's part of fashion, isn't it, I suppose? And whether we create that culture and society ourselves, I don't know. And you get some people who just wear whatever and don't give a fuck and more power to you. Because mm. maybe I'll get there. Maybe that's actually maybe my still thing from my swimming days that I'm just not 100% there with yet. Yeah. And that's okay. It, it's okay that maybe one day I will get there, but at this moment in time, I'm just not, I'm just not there yet. And I've accepted that, if that makes sense. So, so for me, it's like, I rather feel comfortable. But those past experiences as a child, especially ones that cre- create yeah. a lot of emotion, They're still are going to have there. long lasting impact on you in later life. Yeah. And well, they're going to be hard, <laughs> to, hard to break. <laughs> yeah. Even just making that point then, categorically, there's still something from like my swimming days in my childhood. Mm-hmm that still affect me now and that's like 10 years on but i'm not fighting against it i just i'm i've kind of accepted it and yeah i'll come I'll not come to terms with it that's not the right phrase i'll probably be able to wear a bandu top one day and feel really really comfortable in myself yeah. but at this moment in time just not there yet i think a good thing a little piece of homework to take away from this week's podcast <laughs> the homework. whether you'll listen to it on itunes spotify whatever jump over onto the youtube channel and leave a comment in the comment box of something that you really like about your body. Yes. Or something you love about your body. Love leave that, that in the comments because we really want to see it. And I think it, as a task, it'll make you feel better in yourself as well by just putting it out there about something that you really like about yourself. Yeah, 100%. And as always, guys, because we forgot to mention this at the start, but we really, really appreciate it when you do leave reviews on the podcast. We always go through them and we read them and they're so, so wonderful. Like, they're such nice comments and we do appreciate it so you can do this on apple itunes if you type in the search bar the not so fit couple podcast and then you can leave a review i'm pretty sure it's the same on spotify now and then obviously just subscribe to the youtube channel Yeah, because we've got the uk podcast awards again coming up soon and the more reviews you have the better it'll be for us so if you've ever taken like if you take an early value away from this episode or previous episodes it would mean a lot to us if you could leave any reviews also on top of that don't forget to check out the micro school app we currently have a seven day free trial running again we'll leave the link in the description of both the youtube and the podcast note if you use code not so fit 20 that will give you a seven day free trial on vip we need to change that, don't we? It's like yeah, not so fit ch- seven or something. Yeah, I'll change, I'll change just... to a seven. It's confusing. Isn't it? That was just me being an idiot. <laughs> not, for, not so fit 20 will give you a seven day free trial. As, as part of that though, with the, the topic we've just been discussing, I think one of the big things that, like our group is unbelievable, by the way. Our Facebook oh group God, is that's, insane. That's I think so it's one of the best supportive. things in the community. Yeah. You see a lot of different bodies in there, a lot of different people who are all super happy with what they're doing. Mm. Just because of the narrative and, and what we've created even throughout this podcast, we push that hard in our group to try and create an environment and a space where people can grow, go to the gym from any walk of life from whatever you look like and feel happy and confident in your body because of the way that we're coaching and helping individuals in that group. Yeah, 100%. So we really hoped you enjoyed today's episode and we will catch you next week. Bye guys. Bye.